Hello. Opportunity cost is a concept that we meet very early in the economic syllabus, and it's about choices and what's given up when a choice is made. Uh, if a government or a business or an individual makes a choice between two options, the option they don't choose is the opportunity cost of the decision. For instance, a student has time as a resource, but it's limited, it's scarce, and they have to make the decision about using their time for work, or using their time for play. If they decide to only work, then they can have a lot of work, but no play. If they decide to only play and not work, they have no work, but only play. Or they can have some combination of the two. They can't go outside this production possibility frontier. They can't have this much work and that much play. It's beyond what's available to them. Let's, decide, let's suggest that they decide to work with a combination of A, which is this much work and this much play. They've decided not to use all their time for play. They've decided to sacrifice this much time for play so that they can have some time for work. In other words, the opportunity cost of OX of work is YZ of play. By deciding to work for OX hours, they must give up that much play. This is the opportunity cost of work, of working OX. If they decide to increase their work, then they're going to have to sacrifice more and more of their play. Okay, that's opportunity cost. But it isn't just students, as I said, it can also be businesses who may decide between buying new computers or buying a new building. If they choose the building, the computers are the opportunity cost. Uh, likewise, uh, a government, which has only a fixed amount of tax revenue, has to decide between things like defence expenditure, road, uh, new roads, um, uh, developing new roads and transportation systems, or education, or defence, or th these kinds of things. It's always opportunity cost, because of our scarce resources. One more thing though, this was linear, meaning that the rate of substitution between work and play for this student was always the same. In reality, this is unlikely to be linear. It's more likely to be concave. So, in reality, the curve might be like this. Let's move away from the idea of a student now, and let's consider a country. A country that can produce either cheese or wool. Let's imagine that the country devotes all its resources to the production of wool. It can make, let's say, 100 units of wool and zero cheese. Alternatively, if they were to devote their resources to cheese production, let's say they could make 1,000 units of cheese, but no wool. They would be at this point. Now, let's imagine we're starting here. They're making only wool, 100 units of wool and no cheese. They decide to make one unit of cheese they're going to have to give up a tiny amount of wool. This much, tiny amount, this much opportunity cost occurs when they produce one unit of cheese. They give up a little bit of wool as they re redirect some resources away from wool production into cheese production. But as they continue to do this, and so on and so on and so on, and as they move to points along here, the opportunity cost of having another unit of cheese starts to grow. At the end, to move the same distance across as here, to have that one extra unit of cheese now requires the giving up of a huge amount of wool. So, the concept that I'm covering here, which comes up all the time on Module 1 papers, is that opportunity costs don't always stay the same. The opportunity cost of increasing production will be higher the more that is being produced. The first unit of cheese had a very little, very low opportunity cost. The last unit of cheese had an enormous opportunity cost. You can see why it is. The gradient is much steeper here. To move the same distance across requires a much bigger drop in the wool production, whereas here, where the gradient was very shallow, that didn't occur. So that's much more realistic, a concave PPF. Okay.